I'm William Kumwembe. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the program Business Time. It is a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. And in the program today, we look at strides towards making mining industry the next big thing as revenue from the sector remains contracted. And also in the program, we speak to MITC chief on what strides has the institution made towards attracting foreign direct investment into the country. We have these and other stories. Stay tuned. Sometimes, our dreams keep us up at night. They can even make us miss out on those little but special moments. And sometimes, they can make us lose focus on the important things. But, at National Bank of Malawi, we believe that your dreams should not stop you from living your best life. That is why we are stepping up to help make your dreams come true with Step Up Young Professionals. With Step Up Young Professionals, you get efficient digital financial services, affordable credit facilities, financial management and wealth creation workshops that are crucial as you progress in your career. Call 626 for more details. National Bank of Malawi. The Bank of the Nation. Hello and welcome, my name is William Kumwembe and this is Business Time. In our main story in the program today, it's been 13 years since the Kairokera Uranium Mine was opened in Karonga District in 2008. For the past 13 years, the country has only realized about 52 billion kwacha from the mine through royalties and other revenues. A situation experts rate as not so convincing as the country has capacity to generate more through the mining industry. Now, our journalist Feston Malegezo from Mzuzu has been tracking the situation and explains what the country needs to do in as far as making the most of the mining sector is concerned. In 2021, President Lazarus Sawira stamped an authority to make sure mining sector becomes the next big thing in Malawi. Among other measures, the president did say that uh, his administration would establish a mining or a state-owned mining company. The rationale behind was to make sure that Malawi is capacitated to test its own mineral samples, but also it will go full swing into the mining sector. But as all these tries are being made, the bygone question has been, are Malawians really benefiting from the many mines that have been established in the country? For example, at Kairigera, a mine being run by Lotus Resources Limited, says it has generated about 52 billion kwacha uh, in royalties, corporate tax, and uh, other activities run by uh, the company. But is this money enough? Apparently, talks are still underway, whereby the company seeks to renew its mining license. The company has also finished exploration program at um, Livingstonia and Chilumba. But as these mining sites are being explored, why do Malawians stand to benefit? We managed to talk to Theo Reita, who is uh, the general manager for Lotus in Malawi. We took our drill rigs there, we did the exploration, we, we drilled a couple of holes there, and uh, then we took the samples, and the samples were brought back to site here. It was inspected by the, by the government officials, and those samples we sent out to South Africa for, for analysis. Look, the, the drilling program is the first part of a very long process. I mean, then, then there will be more exploration being done in that area. We want to see if it's viable to go into that area. And after that, there will be more work done to, to, before a mine will be created there is still a long way off, even if, if, if it's positive. It's, it's not a thing that you drill today and tomorrow you will start a mine. It's, it's not. All the other economics needs to come into it, like the road transport, like this, like that. So it's not a, a, a one-day decision on that. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. Commenting on the developments, uh, Mining Minister Herbert Mbawala says if the Chilumba and uh, Livingstonia mines are really open, it is a plus 
for Malawians. You know, them going into Shilumba, going into Livingstonia, for Malawi, it's good news. Uh, because it means the lifespan of the mine will extend from 10 years. What we have now at Kairekera is 10 years deposit. They will do the mining for 10 years. But when they open Chilomba, they open Livingstonia, it's another 20 or 30 years. So it is good for Malawi uh, to also go into Chilomba and uh, Livingstonia. So the issue already about in terms of engaging the community, those issues will be uh, handled as they I can film up on the deposits because now they've sent samples to South Africa to be you know, tested to confirm the deposits that are at Livingstonia and um, Chirumba. So once that is filmed up, then we engage the communities to sensitize them. Just like his boss, Mawala also hypes the state owned mining company, saying if it really materializes, uh, Malawi would stand to benefit a lot from the mining sector. The plans are underway to have a state owned mining company. This company will be doing a lot of things. One, it will be the carrier or the manager of the freehold carrier of shareholding of the government. So it will be this company managing that freehold carry in these companies. Secondly, this company will go into actual mining. They will have their own mines. They will do the exploration. They will go into actual mining. They will have equipment to do the actual mining where all the 100% benefits will be Malawians nothing going outside of this country. Then uh, thirdly, we want them to house the state of the art laboratory equipment so that we are able to test each and every mineral here. When investors come, they want to do their own testing. They should test it in our state-owned company and we also get revenue from that. But we charge them for that. So we avoid these guys taking samples outside, at the same time, we we'll charge them for the service. So we'll also generate revenue from that. So that's what this company will be actually doing. But mining expert Paul Mpula says for long, Malawians have gotten raw deals from the many mines that have been established in the country. He says it is high time Malawians or the government should do up its game so that Malawians get the best from the deals it signs with various companies that have ventured in the mining sector the state-owned mining company that the government seeks to establish in the country would require about 5 billion kwacha to be established in the country. Now, imbalances persist between forex demand and supply in the country, mainly due to the country's insatiable appetite for imports, while on the other side, the country has been unable to produce enough for the export market. While this is the situation, it has been piling pressure on other key macroeconomic fundamentals, which recently forced the Reserve Bank of Malawi to devalue the local currency, the Malawi Kwacha, by about 25%. But the question remains, what does the future hold as the country remains at a volatile situation? Agriculture remains the backbone of Malawi's economy, which means it mostly depends on it for economic growth. Malawi has its main export tobacco, which is complemented by sugar, tea, and other uh, seasonal crops, such as soya beans. Malawi has not slowed down in the cultivation of these crops, but currently the country is struggling with forex, well, runs, but mostly dollars, to the point that they Import cover hovers around 1.5 months of import, which is halfway down the recommended three months. Apart from tobacco, other sources of foreign currency for Malawi are loans and grants from donor partners. Minister of Finance Sosten Gwengwe said when he was uh, presenting the budget in parliament that Grants are estimated at 320.3 billion kwacha, which is about $320 million under the current exchange rate, representing 2.8% of the GDP. The minister further added that these grants comprise of 278.4 billion kwacha, which is about $278 million under the current exchange rate from international organizations, and 41.9 billion kwacha from foreign governments in form of dedicated projects.
Malawi last year realized $197.1 million from tobacco and figures from 2020 exports show that the country exported sugar worth $97.9 million and tea worth $83.6 million. All revenue in foreign currency are not even in line with the country's wage bill. Because according to a second Reserve Bank of Malawi Monetary Policy report of 2022, merchandise trade for this year's first quarter resulted in a deficit of $456.6 million from $610.3 million in the last quarter of 2021 and $465.7 million same period last year. Which means that Malawi's import bill was $421 million higher than its exports. Even though it is clear that Malawi's exports, which are highly dependent on agriculture and tobacco being the main export earner, is not helping Malawi in any way, the Minister of Agriculture, Lobin Lowe, insists that the sector has potential. He said when he was opening the Mzuzu auction floors that tobacco remains a high-yielding crop. Economists and development partners, however, have advised government to diversify the economy and move from highly depending on agriculture to depending on other sources of exports, such as the manufacturing sector. Economists from the Malawi University of Business and Applied Sciences, for example, Bechani Chereni, believes that the country should encourage the production and consumption of locally produced goods and services rather than imports. He believes that the Ministry of Trade and Industry should cut on some imports and make sure that Malawians are consuming locally produced products. Malawi has the Malawi 2063 blueprint, which aims at making the country a middle income, self-reliant and wealthy nation by 2063. But now it is clear, as we have seen, that agriculture in general has not helped Malawi to improve its exports and reduce its imports. Therefore, it is time now than ever that the country should make sure that it moves from heavily depending on agriculture to other sources of exports such as manufacturing and mining. Remember, this is Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. We'll be right back. Sometimes, our dreams keep us up at night. They can even make us miss out on those little but special moments. And sometimes, they can make us lose focus on the important things. But, at National Bank of Malawi, we believe that your dreams should not stop you from living your best life. That is why we are stepping up to help make your dreams come true with Step Up Young Professionals. With Step Up Young Professionals, you get efficient digital financial services, affordable credit facilities, financial management and wealth creation workshops that are crucial as you progress in your career. Call 626 for more details. National Bank of Malawi. The Bank of the Nation. Welcome back. This is Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. My name is William Kumwembe. Moving on with the program. For quite some time, the country has been failing to attract substantial amount of foreign direct investment. This is due to some structural challenges the economy has been facing, one of which is persistent power outages. Now, the question is, what is the country doing? towards attracting more FDIs going forward? This is a question I posed to Malawi Investment Trade Center Chief Executive Officer, Paul Kwengwele. So far, we're doing very well. Uh, we've seen a lot of interest in Malawi recently, especially after the 2020 Expo in Dubai. We had quite a lot of investors after seeing Malawian uh, pavilion, the 
displays that were there, the information about Malawi. We have quite a few investors that are, have actually taken interest to come to Malawi and explore the possibility of investing in Malawi. These are what we call leads. And then leads tend to a good percentage of them. Sometimes it might be a low percentage, but at least a certain percentage of them tend to be full investments. So when people come here, they find out the environment, and some of them indeed invest in Malawi. The, the, that particular interest is done when we explain about the information. When they come here, they also look at several factors to decide what they want to invest into. Sometimes they might have already made the decision, but when they come here, they will look at several other factors to make them more interested to invest. So certain times we might have, let's say, out of 100% of leads, you can have investments as low as 10% or as high as 50%, which is a, indeed a very good plus. So we're just hoping that uh, most of the leads actually actualize into investments. It is always our hope. Yes, actually, Malawi Investment and Trade Center, their role is not only to deal with FDI, and that's the whole misconception that takes place outside there. People think that because maybe there are more fairs taking place outside the country, they feel that we are more of attracting investment from outside. You'd be surprised that uh, in most of these uh, fairs uh, uh, taking place outside, we convince Malawian entrepreneurs, sometimes small and medium enterprises, to go there. Recently we had a group of uh, small and medium enterprises, uh, mostly composed of women, go to Browayo, where they had a very good trade fair, and they've come up, come back with very nice deals. So all the time we're trying as much as possible to convince Malawian entrepreneurs to actually come up with investments. Unfortunately, sometimes people might fall short of the actual resources or financial resources, and we encourage them to go into a joint venture with maybe people from outside, which turn into very good investments. Partnerships, joint ventures have actually materialized to good, good investment for the country. Well, most times people expect immediate results. That's not the case with investments. I'll give you an example. Somebody coming to Malawi to invest in macadamia. Macadamia, Malawian macadamia is like gold out there. But it takes about three or four years before somebody starts harvesting macadamia. So you might have somebody, a company coming to Malawi, joint venture with a Malawian to start producing macadamia. They have maybe uh, 3,000 or 2,000 hectares of land but then it won't immediately uh, materialize until maybe some four or five years later. So we have to be patient. The certain investments, you will see immediate results, but most times there's always some grace period before we actually see what is coming out. And I promise Malawians, we'll get investors here, we'll get local investors invest, and then work together to actually uh, improve our investment climate in the country. Now, in other business news, on Tuesday, the Malawi Revenue Authority, MRF, faced clearing agents to discuss best ways of working together to be effective and efficient going forward. The meeting is very critical on our part. Uh, we wanted to meet uh, the clearing agents because there are many st uh, stakeholders in the clearance of, of goods and the revenue collection. And so uh, we had issues that we had to discuss with them, and they also had issues to discuss with us. So this was an opportunity to have our uh, issues reconciled and then come up with solutions so that we can forge a way forward and our best to save our clients. One of the key areas is that uh, we should be meeting quite often, uh, say quarterly, to discuss our challenges be, uh, between us and they uh, come up with solutions 
Our colleagues have been complaining that we don't meet them often. Maybe we introduce certain measures that uh, that uh, they, are, uh, they have not been consulted in the process. And so we want this consultation to, to go on uh, so that we should make our, our work uh, smooth for both of us. Um, corruption and fraud have uh, been rife in the, in the correction of customs duties. And this is what we were discussing. As you may recall, that uh, MRA was, uh, um, was said to be uh, one of the corrupt institutions in the country, that it was a high up there. On. And so we thought that uh, uh, since we work with our colleagues uh, who are cust uh, customs agents, uh, maybe there's a uh, shared responsibility uh, for this uh, uh, perception. And uh, we discussed that. Uh, if they are corrupt free and we are corrupt free, uh, this is not going to come as a perception as it has been said uh, uh, before. Well, on that note, we've also come to the end of today's edition of the program Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. On behalf of the entire production team, my name is William Kumwembe. Always remember, if it doesn't make money, then it doesn't make sense. Stay safe and bye for now.